Yes, thank you for being here. Um, and not only thank you for being here, because you are going to take something um, with you you will not get right now from the web. Um, I will provide you an overview about what is required as per January 2024. Um, so what drone manufacturers need to fulfill in order their drones may be distributed or operated within the European uh, territory for the category open and category specific. Um, I will try to give you an idea how this process goes with a reference to the uh, classical known CE declaration for any type of electronic goods. Um, I will also do a small step aside coming to a market surveillance done, a campaign on RPAS systems. A very interesting outcome um, which will also give a little bit more awareness about how serious this topic will be taken. Um, then, yes, you will get a very small overview about us, NAFSERT, where do we come from and how do we get, let's say, towards or got towards uh, um, certification of, of drones. Um, then, most important, I think, for most of you uh, attending here is what about the standards? So what is available? What can I get so far from the web? What is preliminary? What, is the, what are the next steps? And yeah, who has that latest information? Um, we have certified drones for 1.5 years already. You are going to ask yourself, how is that possible? Well, there is a way out. Um, main pain points by, by, by manufacturers and also their investors. Um, and yeah, we will try to sum this up with some USPs from our perspective, helping you. And then maybe you have some questions uh, at the end. Anyhow, you can write an email. It's, it's up to you. So very important, if you would like to bring any type of electronical good into the European territory, sell it, operate it, whatever, you need a CE declaration. This is done by the manufacturer itself. Now, in addition to this, there needs to be a declaration as well about the conformity of the drone towards this delegated regulation Michael was referring to. And this declaration has to be done by the drone manufacturer himself. If this is there and both labels more or less are on the product, then the product may be sold and or operated within European territory. So CE declaration mostly known by all people. It, um, it's about topics like these, red reach, uh, EMC, EMV, etc. And the question is, how, how is that done? Well, this declaration is not that easy. You don't have all that measurement equipment, the facilities in-house. So mostly due to complexity, these tests are performed by an external laboratory. And in a similar way, this will now also happen with the drone uh, certification, respectively, with the declaration then by the drone manufacturers about their classes. So there are the following six classes defined in the category open, whereas you see the two red ones mentioned here will be primarily used in the category specific. So also for flights beyond vision line of sight. Definitions are made, what has to be within a, a class uh, one draw, a zero drone below 250 grams, one, two, and three. Four is like what you and I maybe as the hobby pilots are flying during the weekend. And five and six will be those drones flying beyond vision line of sight, maybe together with some standard scenarios uh, with respect to the risk assessments. Whereas I can say, or we can conclude, that the requirements towards the C5 and the C6 six drone are based on the ones of the C3 drone. C1, C2, and C3, anyhow, need to uh, be, let's say, assessed by a notified body. And for the other drones as well, <laughs> a declaration has to be made by the uh, drone manufacturer. And how will this happen in reality? Again, uh, a notified organization may uh, assess these drones and, and provide, let's say, the information so that the um, drone manufacturer can declare uh, conformity. I uh, spoke about this, uh, let's say, market view, uh, review that has been done in 2015 on RPS. I will just click it through because there are many, many things in there. We can speak a lot about it, but in the end, the story is 97 drones were taken from the market, assessed over a period of about six months. 
different ways how these uh, drones were taken from the market and with the focus on RTTE, these drones have been measured. And that's the outcome. 92%, sorry guys, take your drone off the market. 82% uh, do not fulfill RTTE requirements. So now we have additional requirements, which are, let's say, all good, <laughs> which are defined um, uh, in the delegated regulation and underlining standards. So we will see that something will happen here as well. So there will be a market surveillance and supervisory done on this topic. A few words about NAFSERT. We were founded in 2006 uh, in Brunswick, Braunschweig in the northern part of Germany, very closely to Volkswagen. And there has been a requirement together with the TÜV Süd, a technical service regarding precise positioning, uh, velocity, and also time. And with our expertise, we could bring this. So this uh, joint venture has been set up in 2012 um, due to, let's say, market requirements. And also, it was fitting to the uh, Tervzut organization reshaping. We became independent, so we could also offer our, let's say, um, know-how and also services to other technical services and complete their requirements toward the market. Now we are bringing in our know-how into uh, norming groups, like you see them here, Dean, Etsy, etc. Then we are also delegated by them to international organizations like the ISO, for example. So since 2006 working, 2012, 100% owned by Ökon, we had to fulfill certain requirements so we could be continuing our work with the Trivzu technical service, but also for other technical services around the world. And therefore, we need to be accredited as a laboratory uh, according to the ISO 17025. That's an interesting point um, because this is already one basis of our business. The second, let's say, pole in our organization then is now the certification of drones. And therefore, we have an organization which is uh, accredited according to the 17065, done by the German uh, accreditation uh, body. And based on that positive accreditation by the uh, German Federal, Asian, uh, Federal uh, Aviation Agency, we have been notified to certify drones. In Europe, there are only five companies that are notified, so they may assess those drones. Um, and you can compare this assessment with the homologation of a car. So a car, if you would like to sell or operate cars or drive cars or bring cars into the European territory, they must be homologated. Now it's a quite similar process for the drones. Of those five, only four of them have so far, at least according to the latest ESA, uh, EASA report, certified drones. And um, only one of them has certified more than drones from one supplier. Very interesting there as well. Plus only three of them are somehow able, capable, and notified to assess drones that may fly beyond vision line of sight. Very important sight information. So in a nutshell said that what we are doing with drones is a very core topic. It's very defined. It's according to the delegated regulation, the underlying standards, and so on. Um, there is a much broader scope. We will not go uh, into that detail here. But that was the original reason why we were always attending the Intergeo um, to support services required for, let's say, the pure original Intergeo uh, marketing. So what about NAFSERT and now this, um, this um, yeah, information about and, and relation to, to drones? So yes, indeed, like we did in the other segments, history uh, for vehicles, for example, emergency call, we NAFSERT, we actively supported in writing the standards. So coming from our hand. That's a very important message also with respect to uh, the standards here, the uh, EN 4709 standards. There are many standards around. Some of them you can buy. We will see in one of the slides later on. Um, but if you obtain them, you are definitely not having the latest version of the standard. There are modifications. And you can understand with our experience from 2006, 2012, until 2022, where we got, became the notified body, that of course we have brought in our expertise, but also our testing methods with all this legacy into this standardization. 
Um, based on the fact that there are notified bodies that's usual in Europe, then the Commission says there needs to be a committee set up and the notified bodies within, uh, let's say, that scope have to, uh, let's say, elect a chair of this notified uh, bodies group and uh, chair in this committee. Don't mix it up with these laboratories that are accredited that need to do interlaboratory tests in order to achieve similar and comparable results. Same is also on, let's say, the certification bodies. Now there is one committee on top which has also to address, let's say, more or less all these topics. By the way, there is no certification body that has in-house an own laboratory which is accredited. Three weeks ago, we have been accredited with a flexible scope, meaning would in the future something change with respect to the standard? We can modify our test schemes ourselves, release them, and from our certification body, we can grab in there and we can go by this. Very important message for you as well, if you are a drone manufacturer. About the scope, I don't or need, do not need to tell much because it's the entire scope, everything under the delegated regulation, underlying standards, we can support here and we are accredited to uh, perform tests there. This is the most important slide, I think, for you guys here joining this session. So if you go and you search for standards um, and you would like to be conform with the standards, you will find something like this with these dates. And if you start to define, let's say, your specifications based on this and also your drone based on this, I have to say, thank you. These are the latest versions. And I have them because I modified them. And I know these are the dates. We did the latest modification. Thereafter has been no modifications. Now it's up to the authorities to make out of these standards the harmonized standard. And if they will get the date, let's like, say, for the first one, the general test, June 2023, or they make it November 2023, I don't care, but the content is that what I have. Who has this else? Yeah, if, they, if somebody was writing in that group, they might have it. I doubt that, because not many people were joining there. There were some joining, yes. These guys have it, but the others don't have it. And this is also affect some other notified bodies. The same is also for those drones that will fly beyond vision line of sight. The black one, information you might find in the market, the blue ones not. So question we are going to speak to, quite clear, we can skip that one. Now, since we have heard that the, uh, let's say, the delegated regulation has been postponed already by one year, since January 2023 till January 2024, the question is, um, what did we provide, firstly, to our clients, and secondly, how could we support them in getting drones certified? How the hell is it possible to certify drones if you have a, not, a harmonized standard? Well, I answer these questions. First, I jump into the topic. If you have specifications, we can check if the specification of your drone matches the delegated regulation and underlying standards. Having the latest version, I can do so. Yeah? Of course, I take a risk, and I'm prepared to take a risk because I write the standards, I know what's in there, I can take that risk. We have found out during these, of course, that the standards or the specifications did not match with the standards. Yeah? So 95% um, had troubles, 90% documentation was not complete, even interpretation of the standards, totally wrong. Right? Very interesting points. We found issues with DRI, that's uh, the broadcasting, let's say, of, um, of, of, of the drone, here this is me. And also interesting, due to the fact that we are the experts on precise positioning time and so on, we found many issues with respect to positioning. So geocaging, geofencing, a lot of issues we found there. This is how we could, let's say, tell clients, hey guys, you will have a gap here. This is the standard, this is what is the request, and not what you wrote there. Yeah? Then we also could perform some pre-testing for some clients that said, in this area, we are not so, no, no, uh, not so sure. We would like to see how this will happen in a real test environment. Based on this, we can approach the market and provide certainty. Because we know what is the latest standard. We know what will be tested because our test schemes have been accredited by the DAX and we were notified as a certification body. So we know exactly how the test will be performed, 
how much time it takes, what will happen. So it, it should be a clear point, what is the cost of such a test, clearly can be answered. And that's exactly what we did. We can then also, of course, take care that uh, the drones will be complying with the, with, the, with the standards, even they are not published yet. And um, this is an interesting uh, point. Usually I, I, I know it, it's this the way. Um, you need to be ready with your certification by then, please. So it's always right now, send us your documentation, and we are waiting. Send us your documentation, please, we are waiting. Yeah? So this is today still the point, but we would like to be ready in time. And then we have the clarity about cost. So entire, let's say, delegated regulation, underlying categories, C0 till C6, whether fixed wing, whether copter, multi-copter, doesn't matter. We can certify those drones, provide a gap analysis to check if your drone fulfills the requirement already today at a calculable risk, straightforward, fully transparent, according to the latest standards. And if you have questions, here, drop your email or grab me later on here. That's it. Thank you.